Good morning, friends. We are in Primo Piazzo. We're getting some breakfast before we head over to Hollywood Studios for a fun day in the parks. We did not get Rise of the Resistance boarding groups, but they let you try again at 1 p.m. He'll talk to some people, so hopefully we'll be able to get it at 1. If not, we have one more chance this trip to try and get them, and then we're back in March, so it wouldn't be the end of the world if we didn't get them this trip. We are going to try to ride Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway today also. I think I said it right. It's going to be a good day. And I got to show you the shirt I made for the trip. It says Chicky Mickey Nuggies. You can't see but I'm like beaming over here. So most quick services that we've been to are mobile ordering right now. They give you this bag. It is sealed so that you know no one's tampered with it. And then it has your food inside. So I got the blueberry lemon pancakes with an Italian sausage. Ooh, that looks delish. What got is that? Croque Madame with uh, Italian sausage. So they're serving the food in these containers, but pro tip, they're perforated on the side so you can rip them off. And it's just a little bit easier to manage eating the food. All right, we're gonna give you the Primo Piatto breakfast review on the Skyliner while we're on our way to Hollywood Studios. So we just finished up breakfast at Primo Piatto at the Riviera, and I got the croque madame with a side of Italian sausage, which was phenomenal. Just a great sandwich. Uh, nice bread that they prepared it on. It, it's definitely something they could have just thrown together and, uh, and shoved out in a much less thoughtfully prepared manner. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. What did you think of your yours? It was delicious. It came, it was the lemon blueberry pancakes. It came with a lemon butter, which was really delicious. I was a little disappointed it came with plain syrup, but I didn't even use the syrup because the butter was so good. All right, so from the Riviera, you have to go to the CBR transfer station and we're headed into the line for Hollywood Studios. So Hollywood Studios is a rather long line. It kind of snakes around. But hopefully we'll bump through because Skyliner is continuously moving. I also just want to add about our breakfast. I thought the service, the, the food quality was the level of a table service instead of a quick service. It's so good, I would even consider kind of going out of your way to get Primo Piatto for breakfast, especially if you're like at CBR. Not gonna lie, I feel like we just got some preferred line placement coming from the Riviera. Yeah, that was weird. But, I mean, I don't mind it. The, we were put kind of in front of members from Pop and Art of Animation that looked like they were waiting longer than us. Guys, check out Phil's shirt too that I made. This is the way. Okay, totally mistaken on that like line cutting Riviera thing. It was a line for Epcot. I think I needed coffee yesterday, guys, because I didn't have it and I was exhausted. I haven't had coffee in days, so filling up this morning. <laughs> Alright guys, it is 8.50. We are in line for Runaway Railway. The park technically doesn't open until 9, but she said it'll be about a 15, 20 minute wait. I'm not sure if that's from 9 o'clock or if they've already started loading guests and it starts from the 8.50. We shall see. Um, when you're first coming in, pull, uh, pull whoever you're with up onto the left sidewalk. For some reason that sidewalk doesn't exist to these people. You've got your crowds of stroller gangs and scooters all going down the main thoroughfare on the road 
there was absolutely not a single person other than one cast member up on that sidewalk and we got in front of about 100 people just jetting down that sidewalk. So that was a pro tip. Also, I want to mention we did not run. We just walked briskly. Yeah, well, my legs are like six feet long. So. You should not run in the parks. The cast members always have safety first, and running is not safe. Since we have never been on this ride, we're going to enjoy it. There's about a billion POVs online, so go find one. And we'll see you after the ride's over. We just got off the ride. I'll tell you my thoughts when we get in line for Toy Story Midway Mania. Cause we're going to Toy Story Land. I'm afraid this tower is gonna line for Midway Mania. A little confusing. Sign says 15 minutes. Cast member said 30. So we'll see. In terms of Runaway Railway, we got in right at the 15 minute mark. So that was pretty awesome. I love that ride. It was, uh, it was much different than what I was expecting or anticipating. It's just a fun, fun surprise. Um, if you're having doubts, just go give it a try. If you can get in when it's not that long, away. you won't be disappointed. Yeah. I can't, uh, all I'm going to say is this Ratatouille is the same sort of ride and uh, I can't wait now. I had so much fun on the ride. I think the re-rideability is fantastic. We sat in the second car, first row, and I want to try out all the cars. Lane number three. Yeah, what, what car do you think is best if you've been on the ride? I also will say I love the song as well. Something in general I just want to say about Hollywood Studios now, which I think is great, is there's multiple rides that are very popular. So I feel like the heavy crowds are a little more dispersed and we got on Runaway Railway pretty quickly. Whereas I think other parks that only have like one big attraction, it's, it gets filled up really quick. The glasses fog up immediately. Phil's claiming it'll be a factor in him losing. That's just because I'm better. I predict a 40,000 point victory mark. I doubt that. In case anyone was wondering, I got better accuracy than Phil. So her accuracy was 30%, mine was 29%. But I predicted a 40,000 point margin of victory and I won by 80,000, so. That may or may not be true. So 15 minutes was the final time for Runaway Railway, uh, but we're going on some rolling saucers because it's only a 15 minute wait. So guys, we got in this line at 9.48. So, said 15 minutes. Cast number side says 20. A lot of inconsistencies with the times. So, kind of got to take a gamble every time we get on a ride. Five inconsistency isn't bad but on midway mania it was a 15 minute inconsistency so i mean that could be a drastic impact on your day basically a line everywhere in the park but we're gonna try to check out some shops maybe get some food and I think we're gonna head over after to like Tower of Terror rock and roll roller coaster because of the awesome rides in Hollywood those only have about like a 40 minute wait
We got one of our favorites, a Ronto wrap, and something totally new. It's called the Galma Snack Sampler. Plantains, assorted root vegetable chips, pork rinds, and a rice cracker. All different kinds of chips in here. And we are outside back behind Ronto Roasters, and this little patio is very nice. These are all the different kinds of chips you're gonna get in the sampler. So we just finished up with our little impromptu snack at Ronto Roasters. We got a Ronto morning wrap and the Gamma chip snack or something. The Ronto wrap was cold. The cheese had been melted and then congealed over. They didn't bother to keep it under a warming lamp. Uh, it turns out that the Ronto morning wrap is gross when it's cold. It was really good when we had it back in October when it was hot, but now it was gross and cold. The sausage was warm, but nothing else was. Yeah. Um, and we got like the Gamma chip snack. Uh, that was like $8. Do not get it. It was terrible. The reason I ordered it is because I like pork rinds. Shocker. Um, and it has pork rinds in it. These pork rinds were literally like eating shards of like granite. Granite with some weird tasteless seasoning on it. The audacity of these people to charge $8 for this. Beyond reprehensible. Like I get it, Disney prices, whatever. Oh my God. Should have been at max for. Half of it was inedible, seriously. The bag's over there and it's full of stuff. It was so hard or so stale we couldn't eat it. So I would avoid Ronto Roasters like the plague. For now. Until things calm down. That's what I was going to say. Until things calm down and go back to normal, whatever normal is going to be. So. Also, just like making our way around Galaxy's Edge has been a real struggle. I guess. I guess I was expecting something different. I was expecting what we're experiencing today to be happening on the first day, and it didn't. So I've adjusted to these essentially non-existent crowd levels, not at Hollywood Studios. Turns out that everywhere anyone else hasn't been, it's because they've been here. There are lines, there are long lines just to get into shops to buy like pins and merchandise and stuff. And it is a cycle. And I know when I'm here in Disney, I have to wait on the lines. I get it. I know that this is a very first world problem, but temper your expectations coming to Hollywood Studios. Then again, by the time you see this video, it'll probably be six months to a year from now. That's not a criticism. That's just the way our schedule typically goes. You guys don't see the videos till almost a year after we've been here. Um, things might be back to normal by then. So this all could be totally irrelevant. Who knows? Everything Phil said so true. I don't know. Maybe it was a one-off on the Ronto wrap, but I don't think the chips were a one-off because even if they weren't hard like gravel, not worth eight dollars. Four at the absolute max. I think we're gonna attempt to go in some shops, and there are a lot of holiday treats we want to try here in Hollywood Studios. <laughs> Galaxy says is just crazy. Even the lines for the shops are insane. So we are just gonna enjoy some of the rest of Hollywood Studios and then head back to the resort because it's a nice day out and we wanna go swimming at the Riviera. Okay, couple things. We're at Backlot Express. They're doing the mobile order thing right now. We couldn't get a slot until noon to order on our mobile device and it is 11.30. So we talked to a cast member and they sent us right down so that we could order the items that we wanted and we're able to do it right away. So if something's arrived, just ask a cast member and usually they can help you out. All right, here's what we got. This is the Christmas tree mousse. It wasn't even on the menu anymore. They had one left, so we got it. This is what the inside of the mousse looks like. It's really hard to cut the rest of it though. All right, Christmas tree, thoughts? Not for me, Christmas tree, yo, oh, Christmas tree. Not for me, not for me. The mousse was not like a typical mousse texture, it was more like a gelatin, which I didn't like. Uh, the cookie underneath was pretty interesting, like so there was like a center layer that was supposed to represent the trunk of the tree, 
Um, and that was like a round cosmic brownie. Uh, that was okay. I didn't try the cookie in the bottom because the other two components were so underwhelming. Um, it was really small too for five bucks. I feel like five bucks is just this like easy round number for Disney to get to. It's just like it's at the threshold for people to be like, eh, screw it, it's five bucks. But also like what they put into the preparation and uh, raw components of that probably cost them 60 cents. So I'm happy that Disney's making money. I just don't like wasting money. And that was definitely a waste of money in my opinion. So I enjoyed it. I love chai. So the mousse was a chai. Uh, again, agree with Phil. It's not a, a mousse in the traditional sense. It's more firm to hold the shape. I don't know I like spiced desserts. So if you enjoy a spice, <laughs> if you enjoy a little spiced dessert, this this could be a good option for you. I don't think they needed the brownie or the cookie. I don't think either of those added any value flavor-wise. And I also think visually, it didn't need it. It did add like, you know, the cookie's the tree skirt, the, the brownie was the trunk, uh, but did it need those things to be cute? I don't think so. Also, yes, it was a cosmic brownie basically. So, I don't know. If you're gonna add those elements, they should make them a little bit better. And I did see a lot of people trying it. The brownie and the cookie were very firm, so I feel as though it was meant to be eaten all separately, not together. like Gertie and the tree. It is so quiet. I just took a picture. Oh my gosh, Pepe! I've never seen those like in a vlog or anything. Pepe! the Boont Shake. It's a peppermint shake. It's got some peppermint bark in it. It's really good. The bun cake is pretty basic. Nothing. Oh, it's nice and moist. Yeah, it is moist, but it just tastes like unflavored cake. Not even vanilla, just unflavored. It tastes like angel food cake to me. Yeah. Phil says angel food cake. Um, but the the peppermint shake is very good. It's akin to those peppermint M&Ms that we tried. Very delicious though. I would get that milkshake again. And I would also recommend it to anyone, even if you're a little not into peppermint, I think it's it's pretty light on the peppermint. Still enjoyable, but feels Christmassy. Love this store. Yeah. <laughs> I said I see other things I'm interested in. I like that one a lot. I like the pants. Oh, 
That is cool. This is the start of going without all the weight. today I don't think we'll come back tonight because it closes at 8 and our dinner reservations are at 7 so there's no way we'll ever make it uh, but it was a pretty good day in spite of all of the craziness at Galaxy's Edge did a lot of shopping and then just ended it with Mickey and Minnie in a little little cavalcade so now let's hop on the Skyliner and head back to Riviera